Elizabeth, this goes through the Senate. It goes over to the House to see what they come up with. Where are going to be the points of difference? Well, it, the conversations, the negotiations are going to be tricky. Uh, the version that the Senate passed now heads to the House, uh, where House uh, lawmakers have said that they want to see additional changes. They want to see uh, the rollback of Dodd-Franco even further. However, you've got moderate Democrats, more than a dozen of them in the Senate, who are crucial to seeing th this bill advance in the Senate, who have said that they will walk if the bill comes back to them with any sort of major changes. So uh, this is going to uh, possibly stretch out uh, for some time, but those differences are going to be ironed out, and uh, it, it could get a little sticky. Brian Gardner, it could get a little sticky. I guess it does make sense. Yes, it's 10 years since Bear Stearns has collapsed, but it also makes sense 10 years after the fact to have a look at the regulation that was put in place and to see where there was regulatory overkill. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. I mean, any time you uh, pass a, a transformative law like Dodd-Frank, uh, it makes sense to step back and look at its effects and its effectiveness. And I think that's what's been going on. It, it didn't start just this year. It's been going on for several years. And I think to Chairman Crapo, the head of the Banking Committee, to his credit, he's been able to put together a coalition of Senate lawmakers who are willing to, to make some modest modifications, uh, despite some of the hyperbole that you'll hear and, and read from time to time. This is not a rollback of Dodd-Frank. The guts of Dodd-Frank are going to exist whether this bill is passed or not. Um, if it passes, there are going to be some very small modifications for regional banks and community banks. 